Hey, it's AJ Lester here from Unleash Awesome again. So we're back with the third video in this little series that I've been doing about problems and how to navigate them in a way where you succeed and get the outcomes that you want, as well as staying in a really constructive state and having the best and most enjoyable experience of life as you go. So in the first video, we talked a little bit about mindset shifts and ways of looking at problems so that you can kind of have a more constructive attitude and mindset around problems in the big picture. In the second video, we talked about a few more constructive little tips and things that you can use to deal with problems and navigate through them. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about the way problems can affect your emotional state and some practical techniques to make sure that you can minimize any destructive effects that problems might have on your emotional state. So in that last video, you know, we're talking a little bit about the problem solving process. And it's important to recognize that, you know, you don't necessarily just get a problem and then go through the process of solving it and then have it solved same day or next day or something like that. Sometimes problems are big enough that it takes a little while to figure out solutions. And then once you have a solution, it takes a little while to implement it and get through to the other side. And then it can also obviously in line with that framework I was talking about in the previous video, it can take a little while beyond that to reach a point of acceptance around whatever parts of the problem still remain that you weren't able to solve. So given that it takes a bit of time to solve problems from start to finish, what do we do about managing our emotional state while we're actually going through that process? And there's a lot that I could say about this, but I'm just going to focus on a few key little insights and strategies that I think you'll find helpful. And they're things that I share with my clients. And they're also things that I use myself and I find them useful. And when I share them with other people, they find them useful too. So that's why I want to share them with you now. So the first thing that I recommend is that, and this is a, a tip really for your life in general, but it's especially a useful tip when you have a particular problem that's quite big that you're facing at a certain point in life, which is to minimize the amount of idle time that you have, especially idle time that you have when you're also alone. So the reason for this is if you're facing a big problem, and you're sitting around idle, it's very easy for your mind to sort of turn inwards and you find yourself in your head. And if you've got a big problem, what's going on in your head is a lot of focus on that problem and maybe thinking through the problem and worrying about all the consequences that have already come up or the consequences that you're concerned will come up as a result of this problem being ongoing. And so there's a lot of negative effects that it can have on your emotional state if you spend all your time focusing on that problem. And one of the reasons that you can end up in that situation, as I said, is because you're idle. And that's just a prime situation for ending up in your head. Whereas in contrast, if you actually are engaged in enjoyable, fun, interesting, stimulating things that are nice and natural and healthy, then you find that your brain and your mind doesn't turn inwards and start focusing on all those problems and vibrating around uh, with all the negative stuff in your head, you're actually kind of focused what's going on in the real world and not so much in your head. And then as you know, if you've watched some of my other videos on emotions and mastering them, you know, if you don't focus on things that bring up painful emotions, then you're going to experience those painful emotions less. So uh, the less time you spend just sitting around doing nothing, the less opportunity there is for you to have all those negative and destructive thoughts come up and the painful emotions that result. And so what I recommend is that you do keep yourself engaged in a healthy way, not where you're so busy that you run off your feet, but just where you have a good solid amount of healthy stuff in your life that you can focus on, that you enjoy and that puts you in a good emotional state and doesn't leave this void where your mind turns inward. And, you know, I put being alone in that category of idle and alone, because very often if you're around other people, it's much less common for you to go into your head. You know, being around other people is one of those things that does keep you engaged and stimulated and focused on something in the real world rather than just getting preoccupied with all the stuff that's in your mind. So the more you can be around people that you enjoy being around or engaged in stimulating tasks that really require your focus, the better it's going to be. Now, 
there are other times when even if you have like a good, solid, engaging kind of life, there are times throughout the day or throughout the week where you can still find yourself in that situation where you end up in your head. And usually it is because you're feeling quite idle. So any kind of situations where you're performing a task and it's not very engaging because you've done it so many times you can do it on autopilot, those are situations where you might find yourself ending up in your head. So for example, if you're doing a drive and you're just so used to following that route that you can almost do it without thinking on autopilot, that's one example. If you're brushing your teeth or doing the dishes or you're in the shower or something like that, these are other things that we do every single day. And because of that, we've had so much practice that we can do them unconsciously. So the conscious mind gets freed up to then just focus on whatever. And if we've got a big problem, well, that's something that your mind just gravitates towards. And as I mentioned in the first video that I was talking about on problems, the mind actually loves to focus on problems, not because it enjoys problems happening, but because it views looking and focusing on these problems as so important to our survival, because that's how we're built. We're built to survive and reproduce, and problems historically mean a threat to our survival or reproduction. And so our brain wants to figure out what the solution is, because if we don't, then that can mean death. So I mentioned that, you know, that's a reason why the human brain is probably more naturally biased towards negative thinking and focusing on problems than it is towards positive thinking and looking at what's right in a situation. Uh, and that is a natural thing. But, you know, if you are aware of this, then you have to be aware that if you give your brain the opportunity, it will naturally gravitate towards focusing on your problems. Unless, of course, you're the kind of person who has been able to wire your brain in a way where you don't get preoccupied by problems all the time. But in my experience, most people, if they're facing big problems, that's where their mind goes when they let it just run freely. So there are times like that when you're on autopilot that your conscious mind can just get preoccupied with your problems. And then there are other times, for example, let's say you're just lying in bed at night when it's not the time to be stimulated and engaged because you want to go to sleep. So maybe when you're falling asleep or maybe when you wake up in the middle of the night, you're lying in bed and the best thing you can do is be in bed falling and, and sleeping. But because of the problem, perhaps maybe it's causing you worry or anxiety or stress or something like that. And it's actually keeping you from falling asleep. And then obviously you can compound the problem because the worry keeps you awake. And while you're awake, you're idle. And then because you're idle, you start ending up in your head. And then all the thoughts create more worry or other painful emotions that keeps you awake and it can become an ongoing cycle. So first thing, it's important to be aware that these are situations where you might end up focusing on your problems and it can create destructive or, or painful emotions that you don't want to experience. So if you're aware of that, then you can be a little bit more conscious in the way that you actually deal it, deal with these situations. And maybe you can find ways to avoid your brain going in or your mind, uh, you know, ending up in your head so that you're not focusing on these issues all the time. And one key piece of advice that I always share with people and I use it myself because it's really, really important is to not focus on a problem until you are in a position where you're going to solve it. Uh, so unless you're actually going to take some sort of action, either in your head intellectually uh, or real world action that's going to make progress towards solving the problem, my advice is don't focus on it. Because if you focus on it at a time when you're not actually solving the problem, the best that will happen is that basically it just creates negative emotions and nothing actually good comes out of it. So, you know, the best that happens isn't that great. You just end up ruminating, thinking it over, cycling it around and generating more painful emotions than you actually need to. Whereas if you don't focus on the problem in those situations, then you won't experience those painful emotions that come from it. So when I say this, I need to clarify that I'm not talking about ignoring your problems altogether and burying your head in the sand and going la 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 and just hoping that your problems will go away. You need to take responsibility for your problems and you need to work towards solving these problems in most cases, but you need to focus on these problems strategically. So focusing on problems when you're not in the process of solving them actually has no point whatsoever and that's not what I recommend. But when you are ready to solve a problem, to take some sort of action in the process of solving it, that's the time to focus on it. So as an example, if you're lying in bed at night 
and some problem at work, you know, maybe it's a Friday night even, some problem at work uh, is really stressing you out, but you're not going to be at work till Monday morning. There's no way that you can do anything towards this problem in the meantime because you have to be at work to solve the problem. Uh, that's a situation where in bed on a Friday night, there is almost no point in focusing on the problem. Whereas when it gets to Monday morning, then there's a point to focusing on it because you're like, right, I need to focus on the problem so I can solve it. Now I'm ready to do that. I'm going to do it. But for that whole weekend, as much as you can avoid focusing on the problem, that's usually what I would recommend because it's not going to get you anywhere other than those negative emotions, as I said. So what do we do about it then? Uh, you know, if, we, if we're going to not focus on the problem until we're ready to solve it, what are we going to do about it? Actually, before I mention that, uh, what I would also say is uh, thinking about your problem and just swirling it around in your head, it might seem like you're trying to solve the problem, but that's actually not an effective way to solve the problem. So let's say you were lying in bed at night and you're having different thoughts about possible solutions. What would be far more effective is instead of lying in bed and thinking about all these different solutions in your head is to actually get up open an electronic document or pick up a pen and paper and start brainstorming or writing out aspects of a solution or coming up with a plan right there at that point. Because then you're not just having this stuff swirl around in your head. And if you do that, you're not doing it very effectively. Whereas if you start writing some stuff down and getting it in front of you in concrete form one way or the other, then you are actually taking some sort of constructive action towards solving it. And in that case, focusing on the problem is not actually a bad thing because you're actually working on a solution. So I should just mention that thinking about a problem does not count as solving the problem unless you're writing some stuff down or doing something where you get it in front of you. Stuff, your brain just can't hang on to that many things at once. And whatever you think up, there's a chance you could forget it. Whereas once it's down in concrete form in front of you, you're doing a much better job at working towards a solution. So aside from that, what can we do if it's not time to focus on the problem yet? Because your brain's going to go there at different idle times and some of them you can't avoid. So what do you do? So one thing I do recommend, as I just said, is that you get whatever's in your head out of your head because you need to not focus on this problem so much. And if your brain thinks that you're going to forget about the problem or some possible solutions or whatever, it's going to try its very best to just stay locked on with that sort of focus. So it's going to swirl it around. You're going to keep on thinking about it. Whereas if you actually write down what's in your head, what you're thinking about the problem, make a note of the problem, some possible solutions that you might have already thought up in your head, as soon as you write that stuff down, you almost give your brain permission to let it go because it doesn't need to keep on holding on to it because you've got it on paper. You're not going to forget. You're ready to pick up where you left off next time. And in the meantime, you don't have to focus on it so much. So journaling or writing out some notes or something like that can be really helpful. And this is the kind of thing that I recommend doing you know, as soon as you realize you need to change your focus, that's one of the first steps that I recommend. So if you're lying in bed, you know, pick up your phone or go and sit in, at your desk or something, write some stuff out, get it out of your head and do that. You know, if you're washing the dishes, maybe you stop washing the dishes and write some stuff and then come back to washing the dishes. So for the rest of that period that you're washing the dishes, you're not focusing on the problem and feeling all this pain. So whatever it is, you know, sometimes you might be driving a car and you can't stop right then and there, but sometimes you might. You might even pull over the road, uh, off the road, write some stuff down and then get back on your journey. Usually there's a way to interrupt that whatever autopilot idle mental state that you're in and you can get some stuff out of your head and then carry on your way. So that's the first thing I recommend to make it easier for your brain to not focus on the problem and the painful emotions. Now, from here, you've kind of got two avenues, as I see it, two main avenues. One is to just not think about anything at all. Uh, and so that's the first option. And what we're really talking about is being fully present. And this is really, you know, using mindfulness, mindfulness techniques to stop thinking and to get out of your head. Now, if you're really good at mindfulness, then this could be a great strategy for you. Uh, in my experience, though, with my own personal experience with working on mindfulness and meditation for a few years now, as well as different people that I work with, I haven't really come across anybody who's really, really good at staying 100% focused and present uh, and mindful on the present moment 
uh, to the degree that thoughts don't creep back into their head. Most people, even really experienced meditators, are not able to stay completely present for long periods of time without some thoughts creeping back in. But of course, if you are able to do that to a degree, then it could be something that's useful to just clear your mind as much as possible and get yourself in the now. And obviously your problems are not in the now. You know, this is something that Eckhart Tolle talks about a lot. He says, tell me what problem you have right now, not 10 minutes from now, not tomorrow, but what do you have right now that's a problem? And usually there's nothing at all right now. We're usually, you know, focusing on something painful from the past or we're focusing on something that we believe will be painful in future, and that's the problem, but the problem isn't right now. So if you can focus on the now, that's a way to clear your mind and stop focusing on the problem. If you can do it, great, but it's usually not that reliable, which is why what I recommend is this second strategy, which is instead of focusing on nothing, what you do is you push your focus uh, off the problem and push you know, that problem out of your head by bringing something else into your head. And so in other words, you're just changing focus rather than focusing on nothing, you're changing your focus from something that's painful, like the problem, to something that is neutral or preferably pleasurable. Now, you can't just change your focus on any old thing. You know, if you try to stop focusing on a problem by focusing on something like what you need to buy at the shops tomorrow, that's not very compelling. Your brain might think about it for a moment, but it won't lock on to something like that because it doesn't really enjoy locking on to something boring like what you're gonna buy at the shops. And it'll go back and drift back to the problem and that will take hold again and you'll end up ruminating over that problem before you realize it. So what I recommend is you change focus from the problem onto something that's really compelling. And usually that means it's got some really good, pleasurable emotional content. So for example, it might be thinking about people in your life that you really enjoy spending time with, maybe reflecting on happy memories, maybe with those people, or maybe just other memories that you can think of that are really enjoyable, maybe thinking about things that you're excited about in future and looking forward to, maybe thinking about things in life at the moment that you're really grateful for. There's all sorts of things that have really good, solid, constructive emotional content to them. And because they're enjoyable to focus on, they're more compelling and they're more able for your mind to lock onto them and stay there, which means that while you're focusing on that, you're not focusing on whatever the problem is. And obviously, by doing that, you're not feeling the painful emotions that come up with the problem. You're actually feeling some degree of pleasurable emotions because of the compelling thoughts that you're having. So to put this into practice, what I recommend is you don't just leave it to chance and try to figure something out on the fly. You do some preparation beforehand and maybe you make a list and you've got a list of things that says whenever I'm feeling, you know, feeling painful emotions because I'm focusing on a problem and I need to change my pro uh, focus. Here are the different things that I will choose to focus on and you just pick something in the moment. Maybe you've got a list on your phone, you pull up your phone, you go, yep. I want to focus on that now. It's happy memories from that holiday I went on last year. Or I want to focus on you know, all this stuff that I'm grateful for in my life and I'm just going to keep on cycling through all these things that I can be grateful for and really focus on how I feel as a result of these things that I'm blessed to have in my life. So you know, at different times, different things might be appealing and they may or may, may be more compelling than others. So you have a menu, you pick something that's compelling, you focus on it. And of course, if you find your mind drifting back, because it can still happen, you just resolve that I'm going to keep on coming back to that compelling thing. And it's really sort of like a meditation where anytime your mind wanders, you come back to the now, or this is anytime your mind wanders off to the problem, you come back to the compelling thought. And like I said, you can usually sustain thoughts about compelling, fun, enjoyable things for much longer than you can sustain your focus on the present moment for most people, unless you're a monk. But if you're a monk, you're not watching this because you've already got it figured out. So that's what I recommend to most people and they find it really useful, but you have to do your preparation because when you're in the grips of painful emotions and you know, that you're focusing on this problem, it is harder to get out of that and think, ah, oh, what am I gonna focus on that's compelling? Whereas if you've got a little cheat sheet list already done in advance when you weren't in the, the grips of that emotion, it's much easier to look it up because it's already written out and to get yourself that focus shift that will help to change your emotional state as well. And then of course, you use that anytime you're not in a position to solve the problem, focus on something else and feel happy. And then when you're ready to solve the problem, 
Hopefully you're in a more constructive state already, as I mentioned in the last video, and you can then sit down, come up with a solution, make a plan, put it into action and nail that problem as much as possible. So that's what I've got for you in terms of kind of managing your emotional state and keeping yourself in a constructive state while you're going through the process from the time a problem first comes up to the time where you've actually solved it to the degree that you're able to and you've reached a point of acceptance with whatever's left over. So yeah, I definitely encourage you to use this stuff. I found it unbelievably useful in my own life and like I said, whenever I share it with clients, which I do quite a lot because everyone has problems, they really find this stuff super useful as well. So try it on and see how it is for you. And I'd love to hear what you think. So feel free to leave some comments below. You know, I'd love to hear whether you've used this sort of stuff before or, or you use it as a result of this video, what sort of results you get, any insights you've got from your own experience that can help me to learn or can help other people to learn, any feedback, any things you don't agree with, anything like that. I'd love to hear it all. And hey, hey, it's May 2022 and I know nobody's watching these videos right now. So when I say leave comments, nobody's doing it right now. But my hope is I'm just going to keep on producing these videos, putting some value out there. And I really do want to build this channel and have lots of people watching it. So one day someone's going to watch this, they're going to hear this and they're going to say, yep, cool. I'm going to put some comments in. And I'm always up for seeing the comments and hearing what people have to say and having a conversation. So whenever you're seeing this video, leave some comments and I'd love to see what you think. Of course, subscribe to the channel so you get notifications anytime some more of this stuff comes out. Uh, if you like this, give us a thumbs up. If you think other people would benefit from this material, then obviously feel free to share this video or any of the other videos. And either way, once again, come back because I'm here every single day for May at least. Uh, so yeah, come back and, uh, and watch again tomorrow and I'll have some more insights and strategies for you. So until then, have fun and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.